Hi, I'm Sabine Yakov. This presentation is entitled More Magnetics Insight Inductance as a Function of Gap Volume. This presentation is in fact an answer to a comment or comments by Professor Chuck uh, to a video that I've posted at my YouTube channel that is entitled The Gap in Inductor Score A Different or interesting perspective. Here is the link to this video and it's also be printed at the page of the video that we are now watching. So Professor Chuck wrote that it's a faulty formula that the air gap needed is inversely proportional to core cross-section and also that the ultimate air gap formula is the length of the gap is mu sub zero ni b sat and there is no dependence on core, core cross section. So in order to explain the conflict here or the apparent conflict here I should say, let me start off with some background. Now in the video that I have mentioned I have shown that if you start with the energy stored in a core you can equate it to this expression here, which is B square volume of the gap over 2 mu sub 0. Okay? And so this is then the energy within the gap. From here, we find that the volume within the gap is equal to this expression, which is a function then of the energy stored and the B specified, okay? So once you know the energy stored, the B specified, maximum B you'd like to go to, then this already defines the volume of the gap. Now if the volume of the gap for a given design is constant, it turns out then that the length of the gap will be proportional to one over the cross-section area because the product of these is constant. So this was um, developed in the video that I've mentioned. On the other hand, Chuck equation starts in a different way, starting with this relationship HDL is n times i, and since most of the energy or the magnetic field this intensity within the gap is the largest and much larger than magnetic uh, field within the ferrite. I can change the path and just replace it by Lg where H it prevails. So I have H Lg equal to Ni. Now instead of H I write B over mu zero because this is air here. And Therefore, I find that uh, B over mu zero Lg is n times i, or here it is, this is the Chuck formula. Okay? No question that this formula is correct. I mean, you can't uh, refute this thing. But the point is, there is really no conflict here. This formula is always correct, but it does not specify the energy stored in the core because L is missing here. In other words, this formula is just talking about I. And this is always correct. But how would you know that in this, in any given design, the energy stored would be what you need, or in other words, that the inductance that you need can be obtained. On the other hand, this formula is talking about the energy which includes then the Li square over 2. And therefore, this formula is correct for any shape of a core. Okay, Change the shape, this will always be correct. If you take a flat magnetic core with a much larger A sub E cross-section area, then Lg will be smaller because of this relationship. So these two equa equations are really not mutually exclusive. I mean, they stand side by side. This is always correct. But you can't do a design of an inductor based on this because you are missing a parameter here. 
while here you have the energy uh, that you like the inductor to store. There's another way to look at it. Let's start with the relationship that describes the inductance of this inductor. Okay, that's n squared AE over L. L is the total length here of the magnetic path length, mu sub zero, mu sub E. Mu sub E is the equivalent permeability of the total core. And I've shown in the video that this is approximately L over LG correct only, of course, in the given range when LF over LG, LF is the ferrite path length over LG is smaller than mu r, or much smaller than mu sub r, which is the relative permeability of the ferrite. Then we have this equation that V is an A sub E cross section area dB dt, from which I get this N number of turn times the cross-section area. This is the volt second. This is the integral of B. And this is delta B, the peak-to-peak -peak value. Or I can get also N as this thing. And now into this formula, I'm putting instead of N times AE this value. And instead of the extra N, I have now this value. Instead of mu sub e, I'll put this value, and lo and behold, I get this equation. And this equation says that the inductance of this core is equal to this volt second that re is required, mu sub zero, delta b that is required, and the volume of the gap. So we see here a clear connection between the inductance needed and the volume of the gap, here it is, and related to the operating condition of the core, the volt second, which indirectly dictates the current given the inductance, and delta V, which is specified for the given application. So, the conclusion is that the Chuck equation is really a necessary, but it's not sufficient equation as a design guideline. Now, if in the design guideline, or if the design that we are, are trying to come up with the structure for the inductor, we are specifying L and I, then it turns out that for any given core shape, these will hold. This is not disputing this equation. It is just expanding it to the practical case in which you have to consider the energy you stored in the core, not just the current. The current doesn't tell you about the energy because there is no L here, uh, so you are missing a central parameter of the inductor design. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.